Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another political episode. So today's going to be a painful reminder to us all that the nation had to go through in January of 2021 a huge political divide. Um, basically um, over the January 6th insurrection um, and I'm going to say it was painful. Painful for both Democrats and Republicans. Surely our country was more than just divided on that day. And I will tell you, I was not alive on 9-11, but I was definitely alive on the 6th. Um, and it's a day that if I had to die on every day, I would have, I would choose that day, honestly. January 6th was truly the worst day to be alive. Um, this was super painful. Unlike 9-11, our country endured strength and unity. But January 6th saw that going down. Uh, that went down. And, um, it's important to remember, although it's two years past, we gotta remember, we, tr we have to come back together after this heinous event. Um, we have to keep our unity strong together. Um, what really killed me that day was to, because I generally hate the commotion. I want to live in an America. I, I'm proud of my country. I love my country. I am, I am a proud, I call myself a proud American. And I want to, um, and I want all, all people, every American, everyone to call themselves proud Americans too, regardless of political party. And, this, and basically, January 6th saw uh, that collapse. That didn't matter anymore. We weren't a United States of America. We were Democrats and Republicans that hated each other. Families were divided. Um, and, and I personally felt the Republican Party is never, ever going to take executive or legislative office this would see the rise of democrat the blue of blue landslides um i have a couple maps that people predicted uh the 2024 election at the days just before uh the actually days after the insurrection uh shows biden uh winning and performing very well trump however winning uh the county vote by 2999 and i'll tell you this guys republicans will forever and will forever win the county vote democrats have not won the county vote since 1964 and i don't know about 1996 1992 please let me know if they did or not it's a i'll try i'll i'll do it i will see if they did or not it, it'd be pretty interesting to be honest to see if bill clinton won the county vote uh twice because democrats did do perform very well in rural areas in the 90s but um this here shows biden performing and overperforming in compatible areas uh you'll see here south carolina is pretty blue here um in all this area uh this is what in texas is pretty much democrat now well we can zoom in i don't see why we can't so uh basically what the oh um what i did i made this map was i put all the compatible states all counties to the democrats and this is what a blue wave would look like uh and you as you can see Repu they can't democrats can't and they won't take the county the county vote because you know there are thousands of counties and republic and in, in total there are 200 2099 counties that are strong republican counties they're unbreakable um, so therefore, it's pretty much, uh, the Democrats are screwed when it comes to the county vote, but counties don't matter when it comes to elections, people do. Uh, and then, with that, electoral votes for presidential elections. And, uh, when you, and yeah, yay, you win the county vote, but guess what? People matter. 
uh, more than counties do. So you are focusing your attention on the county vote. So yeah, I have Wisconsin. Um, my home county, I'm in. Uh, my home county, Carver County, right here. I gave them to Biden, right here. Uh, Trump won this county by nine points. This county has voted for the Republicans since 1936. Well, actually, I don't know if that's true. 1936, possibly 1936 for Republicans. Roosevelt could uh, Roosevelt won that won Carver County just one time. He is the last Democrat to ever carry Carver County, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Um, thus, then again, Carver County has resisted Kennedy, it's resisted LBJ, it's res and it's gone all hands off to Reagan and Nixon. Um, it was, at the time, one of the most Republicanist county, the most Republican county in the state of Minnesota. It is currently holding the most... The long, the the, pure, the longest Republican voting county in the state of Minnesota, along with Otter Tail County. Otter Tail County has also voted Republican uh, since 1936 and has not been carried by any Democrat. Uh, so these two are tied. Otter Tail and Carver counties, they're pre pretty tied. But I will say if it... Carver County's going downhill pretty quickly, thanks to the county getting more suburban, getting more populated in the east, um, thanks to the metro expanding. Uh, the Carver County has a population of over a hundred thousand people, a hundred thousand people, uh, while Otter Tail County is pretty rural, with under sixty thousand. So I think Carver could fall pretty quickly. Um, so, yeah, in this scenario, I did say, yes, Carver County could very much go blue. It's technically a compatible county. Um, and, yeah, this is my county uh, prediction, my prediction when it comes to the counties. And you'll see Biden did very well. Uh, you'll see, usually, uh, Democrats get under 200 counties. They usually typically get 200 counties when they come to uh, the county vote but this uh, biden pretty much got two over a thousand democrats never got over a thousand counties since 1996 that was the last time they reached over a thousand counties won um this is the very first time by state vote uh i predicted that Biden would win 486 electoral votes once again this is basically going with the map um so, strong, de well, when it comes to this, I'm pretty much saying here, strong Democrat uh, for New York, Pennsylvania, I would say is, so well, I would say is somewhat, Dem well, it really depends, I'll say somewhat Democrat here, and for um, in West Virginia, too, is got three counties for Biden. So, yeah, I guess, um, yeah, this is definitely a blue wave. Trump getting only 52 counties. I even predicted the blue south, the deep south going to the Democrats. Why? Well... When you take a look here, um, you will see there. Are, Alabama has some compatible counties. These, uh, uh, this is the black belt right here. This over here, blue area connecting each other. Those are full of African Americans. These are one of the most African American areas in the whole country. Um, thus, um. Probably more would go if, and both Trump got a dis had approval rating of twenty seven percent. That was his lowest, and that was after the insurrection. And that's tip that's a performance at twenty seven percent. That's like when it comes to an election, no leader, no no person, no like no 
um, candidate in a presidential election won a state at 27%. That doesn't happen. So, initially, maybe yes, his approval rating would have got back up. Um, but then again, um, you know how it usually, um, Alabama, Mississippi, yeah, they're conservative, but they do have an African-American population. I'm not saying that African-American population will go out for them. I'm just saying maybe these, these states, along with Georgia, if Georgia can do it, well, I know Georgia has Atlanta, uh, disclaimer, Georgia has Atlanta. Uh, Alabama, Mississippi, they don't. But once again, public opinion goes around. And the way the media did it, I remember exactly how the media did it. Uh, painting, if you, you need to, in order to be accept, accepted and quote, quote, forgiven, you would have to denounce Donald Trump. You would have to denounce the MAGA uh, regime, they would call it. Um, but, um... And, uh, um, for, and that itself, um, a lot of people ended up doing that. Uh, a lot of people turned them back, their backs. A lot of Republicans turned their backs on Trump. Reason? Well, that explains why Trump got a 27% approval rating. Um, so, that again, a uh, very big... Um, I like to call this the blue the blue wall. More, most likely, all these Democrat area they're part of the blue coalition, blue dog coalition, an area of conservative Democrats. But once again, uh, I don't want to I don't want to compare Trump to Hitler, and I won't. Uh, and I feel really bad for doing that. And he's not at all, not at all, uh, comparable to Hitler. But how the media uh, is trying to make him look like, they're trying to make him look like that. That's what they were making people think. Uh, vote for the right person, do the right thing. That's That objective is pretty much going to take everyone over someone's brain. So this was what was going to happen. Did it happen? No. It didn't happen. And what happened uh, that didn't make it happen? The guy to the right right here. Mr. This guy right here. My right cursor is. Very coincidental you had to pop up on the same on this video. So yeah, Biden. Uh, a lot of conservatives knew Biden. Yeah, you're not gonna do good. You're not gonna do well. No, people are not gonna like you. Biden. Yeah, your approval rating went up to seventy percent when you first got inaugurated. That's pretty good. That's like a whooping landslide. Biden could have won every state. Like boom, 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 boom. Every state unchallenged. I mean, the last, the only president to hit seventy percent was Jefferson. <laughs> I mean. But, guess what? His approval rating began to go down when time progressed. And conservatives knew that was probably going to happen. A lot of Trump supporters knew, yeah, he's not going to stay up for the 70s. Probably for a few hours and he's going to go down. Um, he went down and then he went. Afghanistan happened and then after that, it all went downhill from there. Uh, so... So, yeah, basically now Biden never reached above water. He's been stuck underwater for over a year. And um, Trump is finally coming back up. Trump is making Biden look bad. No, Biden's making Trump look pretty good here. Um, and once again, the Hunter laptop story. Once again, Republicans using that to their advantage. Oh, uh, Biden and is not taking accountability on this. This is turning... And I do feel a lot of Americans are unsure about Trump. They're pretty unsure. A lot of Republicans are unsure. And I don't know, a lot of Republicans like what Mr. the former president has done for the country, but... That January 6th scar, it's still all over him, 
and he's still being blamed for it. People are still mad. Um, and I personally think, um, do I think Trump can win in 2024? I think he can. If he's running against Biden, I think he can. But he needs to do a lot of work. He cannot go in and say, I'm going to win this. No. Because the Democrats will easily strike him down with the January 6th comments. They will keep doing that over and over and over and over until finally he's done. Uh, so, I'll, so, yeah, I think, but, yeah, if Republicans strategize on this, being more... Uh, strategical and being smart about coming back, I think Trump could possibly win 2024. Do I think DeSantis will do better than Trump? Absolutely. DeSantis has a good record. DeSantis has a clean record. He's um, He's got support from independents and third parties, even some Democrats. I think he would easily win in a landslide in 2024, especially against Biden. So I personally, should the GOP nominate DeSantis? Absolutely. If you want to win, if you want to secure your victory, if you want to save America, quote unquote, that bad, nominate DeSantis. But yeah, otherwise, with the Trump-Biden uh, uh, simulation, uh, it's a 50-50 chance. You roll the coin, Biden goes on Biden, Biden gets 54 more years. And yeah. And my point of this is the GOP has pretty much risen out of the ruins. It's risen out of the ruins of popularity because the GOP wasn't supposed to win anything in 2022. It wasn't supposed to win anything. Um, example, uh, I'm not going to do the House because we're running out of time, but uh, we basically, now people will vote for the incumbent senator if they're doing good or not. Now, I do think Hassan, this is my Senate prediction, if January 6th was still a huge thing and it's not anymore. Um, Pennsylvania, I'll pr pretty much give it to the Democrats simply because uh, Fetterman won despite the GOP popularity of the 2022. Um, North Carolina would probably go blue. Tim Scott, I do think, would win because he's incumbent. Georgia. Mm, Marco Rubio, I think he would win because he's pretty popular. Alabama. Mm, yeah, simply because conservatives have been pretty good there. Kentucky. Um... Yeah, I think Ron Paul would win because he's been more experienced. Ohio, I'd say Democrats could win that. Uh, Indiana. Uh, I'll probably give... Um, mm, yeah, I'll probably give it to the Democrats. Wisconsin, Illinois... Kennedy would easily win Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri. Well, I'd probably give Missouri to the Democrats. Um, Kansas, uh, Oklahoma's, Colorado, Arizona. Well, actually, no. I don't think Utah would go. And the senator of Alaska has been approved by a lot. So that, that's my little prediction for the Senate. If uh, And a lot of people are going to criticize me with, Arizona, with Indiana. And that's fine. Because Indiana went to Obama. Indiana has um, the amount, has a good amount of counties with... with Mo no, many people and if you get the enough people in these different cities you're easily going to flip the state besides um, I don't know about the Indiana Senate election in 2022 United States Senate elections I want to check on Indiana if their incumbent senator was running for re-election sure uh, they would win
but okay I'm gonna change that Todd Young would probably win you probably like get a 51 or a 54 in Missouri the reason why I flipped Missouri was they had a hard time in 2018 and let's go back to that well let's click on Missouri um yeah 55 percent you Missouri you usually vote over 60 percent for Trump why 55 so that's a good explanation these areas obviously are the reason why Schmidt got 55 percent um so yeah I do think uh Democrats would win Missouri if this was after January 6th so Kansas I'm gonna ch double check on Kansas if if it was a totally new guy like if the incumbent guy didn't uh seek re-election I do think we'd go blue uh but yeah I think this was good this is a good map I made um predicting a Democrat win so yeah uh, House of Representatives, we're skipping that, unfortunately, uh, because I'm running out of time. Let, we're going to wrap it up ta doing my uh, gubernatorial prediction. Um, um, gubernatorial, the governor, 2022. Um... Yeah, I do think Sununu would win. He's pretty, um, he's a part of the swampy coalition, but, uh, a Trump supporter at heart, but kind of merged with the swamp a little bit, I feel. Uh, Scott, an anti-Trump Republican, would probably easily win Vermont. They like that status quo with their government. Um, Massachusetts... Um, McMaster wins here. I think Brian Kemp would win because he had resisted, well, yeah, pretty much resisted, uh, the election, the election fraud thing in 2020. DeSantis was pretty popular at the time. Uh, Alabama... Divine, too, is pretty popular. Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois. Arkansas. Mm, we'll give Iowa. So, apparently, it looks like Republicans would do pretty well in the governor elections. Um, it's, but, once again, the Senate matters. Like, yeah, yeah, gubernatorial, whatever. Um, but once again, like always, the Senate matters. Um, Texas, well, Texas would probably go blue. Uh, New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho. So yeah, and that would basically wrap it up from here. Um, I'm a little hesitant about this map. I do think Oklahoma having these the gubernatorial election results being so ridiculously close, Oklahoma could have gone to Democrats. But once again, uh, having that being related to January 6th, no. Because most Oklahomans like Trump. Um, Governor Stitt, I don't know how he, why he got a 55%. Uh, in his um, uh, re-election, uh, but he got fifty-five percent, and that was kind of surprising. Um, so yeah, and yeah, South Dakota. Well, I'm probably gonna give South Dakota to because no one wasn't doing really well. So yeah, this is my map. And I haven't heard anything wrong about this Santas. I didn't know if he got some criticism. And seeing, I mean, 
he happened to get a 60 percent uh i mean a 59 percent technically in a landslide for in his re-election but nevertheless democrats still get 27 27 so yeah just reviewing of uh, that and just take a look this is what was going to happen it didn't happen it didn't happen. Republicans should celebrate and capitalize on this. Uh, I was for sure, yep, Republicans are going to get another guy in office. The, no more winning the Senate. No more winning the House. This is it. This is We're done. It's done. GOP's done. And guess what? I and a lot of people were wrong. Republicans actually did pretty well. Let's go all the way back to January, like January 7th, 2021. And we take a look in the future. We would be going, Republicans nailed it in 2022, despite having the January 6th stain on their back. Um, was it a landslide? No. <laughs> uh, but once again, Republicans, and I do think Republicans should be pretty thankful that they are pretty popular and they're getting more popular and they, they are given a second chance because it wasn't used it wasn't going to be that way in 2024 biden harris uh, probably kamala harris was, was probably going to win a landslide it was going to be democrats all the way um but now the gop has got another chance um so uh Compared to two years ago, I feel people, have, most Americans do, have, according to polls, are kind of annoyed with the January 6th drama. Like, yes, we all lived through this painful, horrid event. Uh, you really want to remind us about it, though. You want to remind us about it? Like, seriously? We want to unite with our families. Yeah, I want to reunite with my liberal uncle and, or my conservative aunt, and uh, and I don't have to. I, don't make me look at them like they're some sort of insurrectionist. So ultimately, that is the common theory here. So that is it for today. Thank you all for watching. The House Speaker election still undecided. Status quo still in the air. McCart. Republicans still resisting the McCarty vote. The question is, can Republicans actually win the House Speaker, speaker election? Or will, or will Jeffries end up becoming the next Speaker of the House? Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next political episode.